So welcome back everyone. Today we're going to modify a PS3 with a Cobra ODE, a drive emulator. Um, to do this, I'm going to use some screwdrivers, a pair of tweezers, a soldering iron, a glue gun possibly, um, a Cobra ODE, which is in this box, that comes with some ribbon cables and some USB cables, and a 2.5K slim PS3. These models were previously unmoddable, you couldn't run custom firmware on them before the drive emulators came out. So the drive emulator we're going to use is the Cobra and I'll open it up here so you can have a look, let's just make a clear way. Right, so the Cobra comes with these ribbon cables in this sealed package here. Uh, the different ribbon cables for the different versions of uh, PS3, the fat, fat, pata, pat, fat SATA and the slim SATAs. So we'll come to them later. We also get a collection of USB cables for connecting the Cobra board to a hard drive and for updating the firmware on the Cobra. So we'll come to them later. And let's see what we get inside our Cobra box. So let's open this now. And in our box we get power cables. We get a power cable for every version of PS3. Um, the fat Pata and Fat Sata. Um, the slim models and the super slim models. So we'll move them to one side. We get the um, Cobra ODE main board here. It looks a lot smaller in real life than it does on the internet, on the pictures. Um, so yeah, you get that. We get a sticker here. It's got Cobra ODE on it. This isn't a show off that you've got a Cobra ODE. This is actually an insulating pad that will sit that the Cobra will sit on top of to insulate it. So we don't have to use tons of electrical tape or glue. Um, these are clips that will hold the back panel in place. This is the back panel I was just talking about. This connects via a ribbon cable to the Cobra ODE and has USB ports so it can connect a USB hard drive or we can update its firmware by USB and this little guy is the quick solder board it's very small and this is what we have to solder to the main board and then we connect this with a ribbon cable to the Cobra ODE right so let's make another clearway get our PS3 back up here and start disassembling the PS3 right so for PS3 disassemble it it's similar to um, PS2 you'll notice it's these little rubber feet um, they go around and plastic ones in the middle like there so the idea is we take these feet out these little stamps like that and it exposes a screw so what we need to do is take them all out and expose all the screws so I'll come back to you once I've done that right so these are my screws exposed here 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 and here you'll notice this front left one doesn't actually come out and there's not a screw underneath it so I'll leave that be here we've got a warranty sticker now if we peel off this this will void your warranty by the way that's all doing the mod, but if we peel back this warranty sticker, we can get our nail underneath it. There we go. And you notice the sticker says void, void, void across it. You should do it on the PS2s as well. So I'll move that out of the way. You can see we've got another st stub here, a lot of feet. Expose it, I'll get the last screw. So now what we want to do is remove these screws, and they look like regular Phillips. The regular Phillips, so let's get our Phillips screwdriver. Right, so as you can see, I've removed all those screws now. Got them all sat there. Right, so with those screws removed, now we can see down at the front that we've got these tortoise screws down here, hidden away a bit. And count three along the front. No, four. So there's one tortoise screw here, one there, one there, and one at the end. So we're going to find out what size tortoise they are and then remove them. Okay, so they appear to be Torx 6 on my little adapter here. So if I just uh, see that pop it in and we can see it's turning so I'm going to go ahead and remove these and then come back to you with them out right so now we've removed those uh, four screws at the front with our T6 screwdriver there that's it um, next step we're going to take out the hard drive if you see this little panel here it's just like all the other the feet just lift it up but it doesn't come free and inside there we've got a very small Phillips screw, screw. so we're going to remove that it has been removed before, but we're going to remove that and then remove the hard drive, which will just slot out the front here. Right, so with that screw removed, take it out, just pull out with a bit of pressure, and this front panel will pop off in your hand, like so. And there you can see, we can now pull the hard drive free. So the hard drive is free of the unit. What did I put in? Put in a 8 gig Seagate. Right, so move that screw holder back into place. Right, so now with all our screws removed and our hard drive bay removed and the hidden torque screws along the front panel removed, 
carefully turn it back over to its top like so and it should just lift off free like that and just lift away there's uh, no ribbon cables or anything like that so just lift the top off and put it somewhere safe and then we can see our PS3 Slims insides this is our new fan they have changed it around the design from the fats it should be upside down did that this is our blu-ray drive right so let's get on with further disassembly right so next step is we want to remove the power supply unit just if I turn it around this way to get a better view so this black bar at the back is the power supply unit first off we'll undo this uh, power cable Molex connector and you can see we've got a screw there so let's get that by out, the guy out and now it comes put the unit around to the other side so you can see the power bar from this side and again you see there's another Molex type ribbon cable we'll just pull that free gently put it out of the way and I'm going to pop out that screw so again remove it and put it somewhere safe try and lift it free now like that lift up and out and that's our power unit free so again pop that somewhere safe right next we're going to move these two screws at the front right in front of the fan unit so I'll whip them out and come back Aerials, aren't they? Right, next we want to remove the Blu ray drive. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to remove the ribbon cables that get to the main board here. Pull in the blue bits on the blue bits, and on this one, just gently pull it out, sort of like PS2. Also, a tip if you can't, I can, but I'll just show you if you can't. If you can't get your fingers in and get hold of it, if you just get some needle nose pliers and just pull on the blue piece just the blue and gently lift up like so, it'll come free and then for the last one you get your finger underneath it, if you can't get your finger underneath it you put a screwdriver underneath it and from the top just grasp it like that, so that's us straight out there's a screw there that's um, holding the drive onto the main board so we're going to just quickly remove that and again put it somewhere safe put it this way so that just lift it up and there's one more ribbon cable underneath it awkward so I can get a decent shot of that and up alright so if we lift up get our fingers underneath we might be able to lift up that clip we can so I'm using a fingernail here if you don't have any long finger and it's come free there if you don't have long fingernails um, you could use a knife or a screwdriver just to lift that free that's going to be a nightmare to reinsert I tell you free. so now our blue ray drive is free so again put it somewhere safe right considering our disassembly there's lots of screws now that hold in the shielding and the main board to the, uh, to the base of the unit so there's two at the front here which we want to remove one here at the side which we're going to take out and one back here and that's all I'm seeing at the minute, so I'll remove those four. Oh, and one here. Remove these five. And I'll come back to you and we'll try to lift it free. Right, so I've removed those five screws, but what I want to do now is undo these two clips here, which if you follow the wires down to the front, to these two metal pieces which we unscrewed earlier. I do believe these are the um, wireless and Bluetooth antenna. This seems gently lifting up. Right, that's one free. Two free. Now they're free, so we'll just uh, follow them along, wind them under the front unit there, under that clip, which is a bit tricky. There we go. And then they should have both lift free. And we'll put them somewhere safe. And we'll come back to them later. And here, if you see, there's a ribbon cable that leads from the eject and reset buttons, power and eject and reset, to the main board. So we want to lift that free as well, and this one is just a, a pull up, so gently just pull up, like so. Right, so that's everything that secures the main board and the fan assembly um, to the base of the unit. If you lift from the fan assembly, and you just gently lift up, 
and towards you it will come free so put it somewhere safe lovely so it's now sat there and we'll move the base out of the way and we'll come back to the base later right flipping the unit upside down you can see we've got quite a few screws to remove here so one at the front here by the fan assembly one at the side here one at the back there one at the back up there and then four here that hold in the GPU and the CPU well they hold the fan onto the GPU and CPU so we need to remove all these and then we'll have access to the main board right so again lift that free right, again put it somewhere safe right so with these two holders off all the case screws off if we slowly flip it back over to its front we should be able to lift it free I would undo this Molex cable here so just gently rock that Molex cable out that holds the fan to the main board we should be able to lift the fan unit off now oh well, the whole case now lifts free which is handy so lift free, let's hope we haven't um, forgot a screw somewhere but it feels like it's lifted free yeah like that so the base just lifts off now so now the base is off we've got access to the bottom side of the motherboard and we also want this top side off um, but there's some thermal paste that's working as a bit of a glue so you, you need to give it a bit of a pressure a bit of pressure and just sort of like push the board free like that you hit it pop off then and off the back and one more small X that we've missed at the front oh well it just pops off like that so there we go put your fan somewhere safe and the top shielding and now we've got a fully disassembled PS3 and we're at the main board so there are the four resistors that we need to desolder and remove right so our method 2 is the same method we used for the Sega Saturn we're going to use a razor blade and a solder iron to remove these Right, so that's the very first resistor off. Alright, so that's one off. And just the last one to go. That's the last one off. Let's clean up that area. So you can see now we've got eight solder points. Four on one side, four on the bottom side. That's where we're going to solder the quick solder board onto. So this is a SATA quick solder board. As you can see, it says on it, SATA QSB. And it says 2K5 to 4K, which means 2.5K uh, PS2 PS3s to 4K PS3s. As you can see here, we've got the quick solder um, pod. Right, so the QSB goes in this way. Right, so that's it taped in place. I'm going to try and solder it in now with a 0.4mm diameter solder. I think that's the first four lines in. Alright, I'm going to get onto the other four lines. I think that's them all done. 
There, it looks to me like they're all in. So what I'm going to do now, move on to the next step. Right, so this is the cable we want, I've got it free now. A good way to identify them, as there's quite a few cables, is the opposite ends, so opposite side contacts. So this side of the contacts are facing that way, and you come at the other end of the cable, and the contacts are facing this way. So that's how we determine which cable we've got. So we'll lift up the connector, and slide it in place. And once it's in place, we close the clip on top of it. Now we want to secure this with some tape. And now what we want to do is want to gently fold it. So we want to fold it like this, gently. Like so. You don't want to put a hard bend in it because you could snap the contacts inside. Like so. So it's in a cube, quick solder the board and it's coming this way. Next step we want to return the top with the fan and we want to thread through this port here our cable gently. So do that first. So, like so, so that's it's back in place how it did, and we've got our ribbon cable coming through. Next, we're going to return our base and our screws. Alright, so that's those five screws we inserted one there, one there, one there, one there, and one at the front here. Alright, so next step is we want to put it back in its base here. So, I'll wipe this. Make sure you lift all the ribbon cables out of the way so it's going And the Molex cable at the back there, make sure you lift it free so you don't squash it. And then lift from the fan like that, and then line up the parts at the back like that. And it should sit flush. And just, just check your parts at the back, make sure they're all coming through fine, which they are doing. Reconnect this ribbon cable at the front. So there's a power and reset to check buttons, it just slot in like that, so no force or anything on it. Now we're going to reinsert the screws that went in this board at the top here. Again, they've got little arrows on the board, like there, I have to see that one. they show you where to put the screws back in, so I'm going to put these screws back in and then come back to you. Right, so that's all those screws we've turned, there's a black one at the back here a black one in the centre here and a black one at the side here and then at the front there was two silver screws a silver one there and a silver screw there so that's all screws returned right next step I'm going to return the wireless antenna and the bluetooth antenna so we'll screw them in first and then we'll clip them on two antenna there we go down under that clip on the fan under that clip on the case in the plastic then the clip there Clip there, clip there, and then we're going to just slot them back in place. There we go, that's black back in place. Let's do the white one. There we go, that's them both back in place. Next step, I want to set this ribbon cable and go backwards with it. Again, don't put any hard bends in it. And I want to tape it down across the board here. So I'm going to do that now. Right, the next step is getting the fluid drive back in place. And if you remember this clip here, it's quite a nightmare to uh, get it out. So I imagine it's going to be a bigger nightmare to get it back in. So what I've done is I've lifted the clip before we try and put it in place. So then I've just got to line up the cable and put it down. Set it there. It's a nightmare. You can see that there. I've managed to get it in. Absolute nightmare. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a nightmare. But it's in. So that's that ribbon cable in. And I can just sit the drive back in place how it would go. Now let's return some of these ribbon cables. Again, just pushing on the blue bit of plastic. 
So that's those three in place. And then we'll put a we'll return the screw at the drive. Hold the drive in place. Like so. Now we're gonna tape this flex cable again onto the back of the drive, like so. Right, so now we want to get in a decent angle. Connect our new power cable. So line it up and slot in the mullet connector where the old one sat and just shove it into place so it'll get a firm grip when it's in place. Right, next step we want to re reinstall reinsert our PSU. Right, make sure that no cables are in the way of it. And just sit it back into place. So we just want to slot it back into place. Like so. Get the other end of the new uh, Molex power cable and slot it in to the power supply. And that's where it's going to draw voltage for the cover board and of course the drive. Like so. The other side we reconnect our power for the main board on that Molex connector like so. Now let's return our screws to the one down there and again the other side the one down there that hold the power supply in place and we'll do that now and come back next step we're going to work on our cobra board finally so I've got my cobra here and this sticks onto the back of it like so and that insulates it from the drive board and it is a bit big so I'm just going to cut off any excess and it is double sided so once we've stuck it on we're just going to Peel back the double sided part of it, like so. And we're going to sit it in the middle of our Blu ray drive, right about there, like that. So that's insulated now and locked in place, so it's not going to move, which is great. We want to set our switch to 2.5k. Da the switch in the down position is for 2.5k, 3k and 4k models. The switch in the up position is for 2k only models. We want it down because our machine is a 2.5k. Like so. And over on this side, see that switch? It's between SATA and PATA. Well, we've got it set in SATA. PATA is only on the original um, FAT models. Parallel ATA. Right, so now we're going to insert the power cable. And it's, um, it's not a slide in Molex, it's uh, just push it into place really, like so. Next we're going to put our flex cable in here, it goes into this one here. This lot you can see it's a SATA QSB, quick solder board, so that's where we're plugging our flex cable in. Under that one it's a SATA drive, and under that one it's a SATA MB. So we're going to plug it into this one here, make sure it's all the way in, and it's lined up correctly, once it's in, close the clip. Now with all this excess, we're going to tape it down, so let's do that now. Right, so now we're going to insert these clips, these hold the back board in place. So I'm going to put this next one in here. So let's line it up, push it firmly into place. That's that one on. That one on. That's that one on. There we go, so that's clipped on nice and securely now. Next up, we want to get our flex cable, our next flex cable. Right, our next step, let's put this little lens on. Let's see. We want to connect this cable into the SATA main board, so it's down is the uh, connector. Let's make sure it's, it's securely in place. Like so clip it back up like that. So it's locked in place like so. Then as you can see, we want to feed this into the UIF clip here. So really so the one I've just opened is the UIF. I'm going to slot it in there. Make sure it's in fully like it is there. And then close the clip like so. So just fold it down here. 
put a bit of tape down when I do that. Like so. So that's basically the finished install. So this ribbon cable here, uh, flex cable, goes to the sat goes to the quick solder board which is attached to the satellite lines. This power cable, which is new power cable, gives power to the Cobra ODE. This um, flex ribbon cable goes to the back of the unit here um, to the UAF board. From the UAF board, we can get to a USB hard drive. On the Cobra itself, it's insulated with a Cobra sticker that it comes with it. The switch here is set to 2.5, 3K, and 4K machines, and the switch here is set to SATA. So now we just want to put our lid on, um, screw it back in, and test. Damaging that river cable as we come up. Like so. And turn it upside down. And we secure our case screws. So I'm going to return all these case screws and then come back to you. Right, that's all those screws returned. So now we're going to put all the stoppers back in. Rubber stoppers, like this one. That's rubber. These go in the corners. Plastic ones, like this guy. These go in the centre. Alright, so that's all I've returned. Now what we want to do is return the torque screws that went along the front here. Torque screws reinserted. Hard to see now, it's got a bit dark. Uh, next step, we want to reinsert our hard drive. Just slide our hard drive in this bay. Push it in snug. So, next step, we take this little front panel and we slot it in there in the hole and we clip it back into place how it went originally like so and then finally we're putting the holding screw this blue screw that holds the hard drive and that front panel in place and once that's in remove this little clip put it back in place and that's the PS3 fully reassembled alright so that's our PS3 from the front we flip it round to the back and we've got our UIF board for the Cobra ODE and it's got a Cobra ODE inside it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up all this mess and then we'll go test it. So back in a few minutes. So as you can see I'm disassembled again. I thought I'd do one thing before I reassembled previously. And if you see here, the ribbon cable that connects the fan unit to the main board, I forgot to reconnect it. So we'll just reconnect that now. Like so. Reassemble it again and then I'll show you testing. So back in a second. Now we're going to set up the USB hard drive with the files it needs to run the Cobra. So we're going to create a directory on the root of the USB hard drive called Cobra. So in block capital C O B R A, like so. Then we're going to create a folder called PS3 underscore games. This will be where we store our games, like so. Now in the Cobra folder, we need to put the files needed to run the Cobra. So we need a manager file. Um, the manager that comes with, well, from Team Cobra, this one, is pretty crappy. Um, very basic, limited functionality. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Multiman which has been ported to work with the Cobra so we just place this manager.iso file into the Cobra directory then we need a database file which is a database of games that can be used as a boot disk for the Cobra so we extract this again to the Cobra directory on the root of the hard drive like so so that's the basic setup done um, what we're going to do is I'm going to put a backup on here now as well so to do this we need gen ps3 iso this creates um, PS3 ISOs from if you've got um, a downloaded copy of a game or if you've got a copy made with the E3 Ripper um, you can use this to create a, an ISO that will work with the Cobra so the game that we're going to copy over is Final Fantasy 13 2 it's the duplex release, we've already got it extracted here so these are the raw files so what we're going to do is we're going to run from a command line and we're going to change it to the USB drive, so just m colon, so then we're on the USB drive. Then we're going to type in the name of the application, gen ps3 ISO, and it's going to ask which directory is a game directory. So we're going to browse to the directory that's got our games in it. So Final Fantasy 13 2, this one. I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to ask where we're going to save it, and it already knows we're going to save it in the local disk M, which is the USB drive, the PS3 games folder. So now we're going to, it's going to ask for a name, so I'm just going to name it FF 
13-2.ISO. Now it's going to ask if I want to split up the um, ISO, which I do because I'm running a FAT32 file system. If you're running NTFS, you don't need to split it. If you're running FAT, which I recommend you do use FAT32, then you need to split it. So we'll click yes. And as you can see now, it's going to generate the ISO. So this is going to take quite a while because it's a very big game. Um, like it's only on 1%. So I'll come back to when it's almost done. So back in a bit. Right, so as you can see, it's on 98% here, it's almost done. So we'll just wait for it to finish up, and then I'll show you the game, and we'll try to test the PS3. So 1% to go, and it's done. So press enter to quit, like so. Close the, the DOS program. If we're looking at PS3 games now on the hard drive, you see it's split it into four ISO files, each 4 gigabyte big, except for the last one, which is the remaining parts. So we're ready to test. Um, safely eject your drive, so you avoid corruption. So click the option in the taskbar and eject the USB drive. So that's gone. Right, so now all we need to do is go test it. So back in a second. Right, so I've set up the PS3. Um, as you can see, now it's got power. So that the Cobra ODE board at the back is giving it a solid red LED. That means it can't find uh, the Cobra files that it needs. So we need to connect our USB hard drive that's got the manager.iso in the Cobra directory and the database file in the directory. So we'll connect that up and let it spin up and what will happen is this should go to a solid green light as soon as the Cobra ODE detects the files. While we're waiting for that to happen I'll just show you this game here Assassin's Creed Revelations is the game I'm using as a boot disk this game here Final Fantasy 13 2 is the game that I'm using as a backup to test and um, so we'll just have a wait for this to come green as you can see it's gone off now so it's spinning up the drive and it's just, we're just waiting for it to go green. Um, once it goes green, we'll boot the system. Keep it in standby until it goes green. So we're just waiting. It's going to take a few seconds. The drive I'm using is a bit old. I need to get a new, decent external hard drive just for the PS3. So we'll get a few, there we go, it's come on. So we'll boot the system up on the pad. And we'll wait for it to start here. Get a decent angle. Right, if we go across to the games column and we go down to the disc, it says PlayStation Move Starter Disc there. It's actually not the PlayStation Move Starter Disc. If you recognise that logo, it's a Multiman logo, and it's actually Multiman. That's the manager.iso file, so we're going to boot that. And we'll press X. It says it's not a full version, but it's just because we're using the ODE version. So I'll wait for it to boot up. Then as you can see, these are the games columns. It's got the PlayStation Move Starter Disc. That's actually Assassin's Creed Revelations that's been used to boot Multiman. That's the game we backed up, Final Fantasy 13 2. So we're going to boot that, press X. Do you want to enable the selected ISO in ODE mode? We'll pick yes, because we do. Get closer for that. And it says, press the PlayStation button and turn off your PlayStation 3 system. So that's what we're going to do now. Turn off the system. Do you want to turn off the system? Yes. So just wait for it to turn off. Just restart the system. You'll notice the LED on the back has gone from green to blue. That means it's now in emulation mode and it's got a disc that's emulating, which is Final Fantasy 13 2. So we'll let this boot up now. And without changing the discs at all, it's still got Assassin's Creed Revelations in there, working as a boot disc. Um, when we've got the games column, synced up. And we go down to the disc, you see it says Final Fantasy 13 2, which is the disc that's been emulated and it loads its picture. So I'll crack that running. 
notepad down there. So, while it's working in this emulation mode, it'll survive a reboot. So if I reboot the system, it'll still show us Final Fantasy XIII in there and I'll still be able to play it. The only way we get out of the emulation mode is if we eject the disc. And then if we reboot it with um, a new disc in, well with Assassin's Creed Revelations in, we'll be able to run the manager again. Or with any boot disc in, we'll be able to run the manager again. Um, so as you can see, it's working here. We'll just let it load some of the opening movie and stuff. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate and subscribe and join us in the next one. So another successful modification. We'll let this video play for a bit. So you can see it's working. Still need to beat this game. Last Final Fantasy I beat was 10 uh, 2. Quite fun. Right, we'll call it a draw. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.